So I'm so excited to welcome Cynthia Stafford back to the program today. This is her second appearance on this podcast, but she's nice enough to return, and we have so many questions for her. She's so inspiring. Cynthia Stafford won $112 million from the Mega Millions jackpot in 2007, but her story is very, very inspiring for so many reasons. But Cynthia, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, thank you. There are many people watching this or listening that are familiar with your story, but for anyone that's not, that may, this might be the first time they're they're hearing about your story, um, what was it like to win the lottery in 2007? Well, it was a, a, a quite an exciting and uh, inspiring, <laughs> obviously, it's, you know, it's a story that's still being told, but it was exciting. It was at, at a time where I was truly in a place of belief and I needed it. I needed to have a certain amount of funds and and it just happened to come through that particular source. So yeah, it was uh, really something that I, um, when it happened, I was, I want to say laughing, crying and doing a number of things all at once. And, um, you know, so it, it's just a feeling that when it comes to you, you just, it can be overwhelming, a bit overwhelming. And then at the same time, you, you breathe a sigh of relief because in my case, I um, did uh, use the principles of the law of attraction, which is something I do anyway, but I decided to use that towards uh, manifesting a larger sum of money into my life at that time. And it worked and it does work. And and I want to get into more of your thoughts on in beliefs in manifestation a little more, a little more in depth shortly. And also have a couple questions about how um, winning the lottery affected or didn't affect relationships, because that's something that I've had to, to live through. But how, how would you say that the lottery changed your life? Well, it changed my life in a number of ways. I had more resources to do some of the things that I had imagined I would or planned to do. Um, uh, I was able to help out family members and friends and even people who I did not know. So, yes, yeah, so when you, uh, and, you know, come into money, depending on the type of person you are, like with me, I'm a pretty charitable person and I strive to help when I can. Did winning the lottery solidify? So you're very much into manifestation. You believe in the follow the law of attraction. And you, this is very well known that you put this out there into, into the world, imagined and focused on this exact amount, 112 million, and then you won this exact amount. So then, then it happened. Did winning this amount solidify or change your beliefs in manifestation? Did it change your beliefs in the power of the subconscious mind and this type of thing? Um, no, <laughs> because this is something I was doing prior to that anyway. Um, people who knew me, who grew up with me, knew I was that type of person. So it was to me just an extension or an add on to what I was doing. And, uh, I'm, I was always the person who cheer others on and like, hey, you know, you can do it. And that's my belief. You can do it. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe, you know, um, that it's possible. And when I say in yourself, it starts with yourself. And when you can't believe in yourself, I am a spiritual person, uh, not just spiritual, I'm Christian. Mm -hmm. And so I pray. And I can't say that this was something that I put in. I did pray to God for resources. I didn't pray to win a lottery. I prayed for money to help me out of a search, a situation at that time. So for me, um, I just feel that I am, I was able to, uh, 
just be it a part of this was part of who I was essentially just you know I just had I can I can say at that time I did more in-depth research in my into myself in terms of my beliefs and why I am able to do that and so by my reading certain books and remembering experiences growing up but reading certain books I thought oh this is why, because I am this type of person, because I do believe. It starts with belief at first. I mean, that first and foremost, you have to believe. If you don't believe, it's like the Bible says, it's like a person who has faith. You don't have faith. If you don't have faith, you don't, it's like you're lost, essentially. And so it helped to anchor my belief in myself and in the power of words, the power of imagining and visualizing and utilizing these tools in order to manifest. I've interviewed a couple scientists who study manifestation and that sort of thing. And one of the things that stuck out to me was the th emphasis on feeling in, mm -hmm. in addition, in addition to the belief, the feeling of something, like really mm -hmm. feeling it, emotionalizing it, and that helping that come to be in a manifestation form. Would you? What are your thoughts on that? I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, I think that's a Neville Goddard thing. But you know, even before him, that was something that was that's even been stated in the Bible. You know, well, all of this stuff is basically from the Bible. Uh, many people overlook it, but. All of this stuff, first and foremost, there. Um, you definitely have to feel it. You have to, you know, emotionalize it. And that's what feeling is all about. You have to, you know, act essentially. If you're a great actor, then you, you're a great manifester. <laughs> Some of the greatest actors are the ones who are manifesting the roles they want to play. You know, they are imagining it. And you have to do that. You have to see it. You have to imagine it. And then, Next thing you know, you're getting casted in that role. You're being called to it. So it, it is part of attracting uh, on a, a, from a scientific level. Um, you can create this feeling within yourself of being, whether, you know, healthy, winning um, in terms of contests, um, relationships just you know if you want a great relationship you have to be great with yourself first you know it just encompasses a number of things in your life but it definitely um that's what feeling to me is all about is um emotionalizing what could be the possibility of what could be and then when that with with the lottery and and other things in your life when that emotion and that belief becomes reality at that moment i mean is that surreal or what does that feel like well you know that you want to you want your own self <laughs> <laughs> was it surreal to you oh it was it felt like okay a... then yeah <laughs> it's <laughs> it definitely was... a surreal feeling especially yeah. when it's you know it, I think surreal feelings come to each and every one of us based on what our belief systems are in life. So you're the type of person that believes, you know what, I, I, every day I go out, the sun is always shining and it may be gray before you step out, but your belief system is, it's going to be a different way. You tend to have that happen or occur more in your life than the gray days. Um, but yeah, um, <laughs> I, and I have to say, uh, it, it, it is surreal, but, um, I think even more so for those who come from a system of lack and not believing who lack faith, it is more surreal to that type of person than to someone who based their belief on the possibility more of yes instead of maybe or it may, it's not going to happen so it's about balancing that scale of you know negative to positive you just have to be straight ahead not look to the left or the right just straight ahead with their thoughts i want to get in a little bit more into manifesting in a second but did 
winning the lottery affect relationships with people? Because it did, it did for me way back in the day after, after, especially, I mean, mostly, especially after I won, but it changed some, the dynamics of some relationships (laughs) because most Um, of the people around me did not, did not win. And so I, I I don't, for me, it was like a, a learning curve with, with that sort of thing, but did it, affect relationships with people or a couple of, yeah a few people you know there were those who were positive and there were those who weren't i i'm a pretty private person so it's not like i uh i i think people know more about me because of this situation but uh in terms of my personal life you know um i it it's for those who didn't know and it came to their attention you know uh yeah you know the there were those who were happy and then there were those who were um kind of conflicted you know so to me i feel like you know we're all adults and you you know it's your job to, to strive to process whatever is going on within you yourself because i'm going to process what's going on with me and and and, 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 and i'm not going to allow other people's thoughts negativity whatever to affect my place and my peace of mind. And uh, I think that's the part that more so than probably back at that time, but no, I haven't changed too much. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I really didn't take too much of that into consideration though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My friend circle is small, so I don't. Mm-hmm. don't worry you, about it. Yeah. That makes, that makes sense. Would you say that it changed the way people perceived you? some people um, or yeah probably because there were people who you know I guess <laughs> this is one of those questions that's, that's an interesting question I don't particularly care about how people perceive me in terms of um, whether I have or do not have I've always carried myself in such a way um, pretty professionally mm-hmm. and um, you know and I'm I'm typically I strive to be in a good mood. So for the most part, I think, yeah. I mean, when people find out that you're wealthy, they do treat treat you differently than if they just imagine in your mind, in their mind, uh, that you don't have much. But I'm just, like I said, I I've never allowed that to influence me because I was raised around people with wealth. And for, mm-hmm. with around people who didn't have it, so to me, wealth was just, it was just something extra to have in order to do the things you wanted to do. So wealth was not one of those things that I chased. And I don't, and I don't allow it to influence like how, like if a person has money or don't have money, that doesn't bother, that doesn't, for me, it's not a big deal. I think, wow, you have it, great. And for those who don't, you know, I, I'm the type of person that encourages them if they want more, ask for it and then do the work to open yourself up to to be in that place to receive it. So I hope I'll answer that question in a way that you because I know it's kind of here and there with that, but yeah, it was Yeah, no that no that that makes sense. And I want to get to more of your tips on manifesting money and everything, but when it comes to manifesting relationships and whether it be a dream job or anything that you want in your life, what tips, what advice do you give to someone? What is the quickest way to manifest? (laughs) I wrote a book called Seeing, and I think I mentioned in the last interview, but my book has all those tips in it. Just a brief overview. Um, and with the law of attraction, there's certain principles that you can't go around because, you know, uh, it's it's like preparing for a marathon. You know, we prepare for a marathon. There's certain things you need to do in order to be ready to run the distance. Well, with this, I'm going to say it starts out with having patience first. If you don't have patience, then you it will take you a longer time to make things happen period. And it takes a longer time in life, but it also takes having faith 
and it takes doing the practice, which is uh, saying your affirmations, first visualizing too, visualizing, like imagining what it is that you want, and uh, then doing affirmations towards that, and with affirmations, meditating too. You have to meditate. You have to take time out your schedule, a um, few moments, you know, every day. It's a daily thing. It, it's once you become, uh, once you start this, it becomes a natural part of your life. So it's like you, you do these simple things to get yourself prepared for the things that you are wanting to manifest. So if it's better health when you're starting out and your health is not that great. Well, you know, you have to imagine yourself healthy. The person who can, could, they want health, they can't be um, affirming, which is part of affirmations. I'm sick all the time. I'm sick. I don't feel well. Even if you are, you have to essentially change your mindset and start speaking into positivity the things that you want and be grateful. That's another thing I tell people in the book. Be grateful. Be thankful. Be grateful. Be, put, it, put it into a practice of being grateful for what you do have. And if you're not feeling well, you know, think of something that you can be grateful about. That'll lift up your spirit. And then start affirming. I'm getting better every day. I'm loved. I'm loving, you know, in terms of relationships. In terms of money, I'm wealthy. Um, you know, the things that you are feeding into your mind subconsciously and consciously will manifest in your experience. So whatever it is, you know, I, I, this, my, you know, I coach people too. And what I've noticed with mm. people that I coach and those who I don't coach and I might speak up and say something is they'll speak things negative, negatively, excuse me. They will negatively speak things innocently. Uh, I'm going to say innocently because many people will say things not recognizing that these words have power. So, uh, and they may say it in a joking way too. And uh, the subconscious mind doesn't take jokes. And for, you know, people are like, well, how do I know when the subconscious mind is working and not working? That's something that's, you know, look, I'm not a scientist. I just know what works for me. I know what has worked for centuries and not just centuries, but thousands of years, you know, based on history. Mm. You know, if you're, you know, just with yourself and you're thinking thoughts within yourself, that's you and your subconscious right there. And if you're subconsciously saying to yourself, I'm unlovable, nobody wants me, I'm poor, I'm broke, I'm a broken person, you say these things, you're giving power to it. You're giving it power. So as I state in my book, you can't do that. If you expect to have the opposite, you have to speak it into existence and then start acting. That's the feeling part, acting differently too. So the law of attraction, that's something that, you know, God created the universe with it. So it works, it works. And, he's, and, and we have so many testimonies from people historically and in modern times of, um, the, the law of attraction and, and calling things into existence into our lives. Um, and I also talk about prayer. You know, prayer is meditating. When you're praying, you're praying to, you know, to me, I pray, I pray to the most high, I call him Jehovah. So I pray to him and I use his son, Jesus. You know, I amen to him. Um, when I was playing a lottery, that's a different thing. Because, <laughs> like I said, I I didn't pray to about that because you know that's a different different scenario. But at that time, um, I was in the belief that you know what I deserve it. I feel that all people deserve whatever it is that they ask for. The thing about the law of attraction, it can work for good and and for evil at the same time. And so that's backtracking to the power of word in your thoughts and feeling. So if I'm feeling really good about myself and saying to myself, you know, I I am an attractive person, you know, I, you know, if I, you know, if I'm somebody that's looking for a relationship, I have to first examine myself. What makes great relationships is, yeah, you know, how good you feel about yourself. 
And what nurtures good relationships is being that, you know, imagining that instead of imagining the opposite and saying negative things about the partner that you are imagining in your life. You know, if you're playing these scenarios in your head, you will manifest that in your life too. So I'm, that's another thing I say, be mindful of the things you watch, uh, the social association, all these things have an a integral part in, a, in your day-to-day life and will manifest in your life exactly what you're, what's on your subconscious mind. What's on the subconscious mind comes out into our material world. So um, yeah, this is something that... Um, and And with the... When when you say subconscious mind, do you mean literally just part of our brain, or do you mean beyond that, connected to a higher source? I'm talking much about my brain. <laughs> a higher source, yeah, higher source. He hears us, but I'm talking about those things we subconsciously say to ourselves. Prayer is when you're taking your conversation to God. When you're uh, doing your meditation subconsciously, this is, these are the things you're saying to yourself. So as I express in my book, take the time, take a few minutes, you know, if you can take 30 seconds, you know, it only takes a few seconds where you just put yourself into a calm state. And for some people, it's a challenge because of the this, this society we live in, the times we're living in. It can be a challenge to just take a moment, but you have to, like, if you, you're taking the time to get on YouTube and all these other social media sites and wasting time looking at, you know, things that try to divert, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. <laughs> to distract, because that's what they are. They're distractions. Yeah. You could take those distractions and put them in the background and take a few moments of your time and focus on the things that you are planning to do with your life. The most successful people the most successful athletes, whatever, and I'm not talking about people who have, were born into wealth or whatever. I'm talking about people who worked at this. They did this by speaking things into existence. Same as you. You wanted, you had to have been believing it first. You had to have imagined it first. And it happened on a subconscious then a conscious level because the conscious is when it manifested in your life with with time one common thing that it seems that people get frustrated with is how much time it takes if they're trying to manifest something and then it just they lose patience and it's just not happening and not happening what what do you say to anyone feeling that way well for people who feel that they, they, I, like I said, I coach people, they pay me to coach them. And what I would tell them is, um, well, you know, that's all we have pretty much is time. So you, patience is the first and foremost thing you need. If you don't have patience with yourself, you know, being an impatient person is not helping yourself or your situation one bit. So that helps to calm the spirit down and that helps the person to focus and realize the things they need to change within themselves in order to create the things that they want. You know, if you can't, uh, if this is, you know, many people, we live in a society where people want things to happen 10 years ago. (laughs) They want it like way back then and they want it now. Um, That journey could have started 10 years ago, but that doesn't mean you were ready for that journey either because it takes being prepared. And so um, in, a, in the case with something like this, where people are like, uh, and I have people come to me like that, you know, I've been waiting for years and I'm thinking, no, you've been complaining and you have not been patient and you've been impatient with yourself and whatever else you're doing and others. And so their life will manifest that exact thing. So what you expect out of life is what you will receive back. So I know that's a deep statement, but it's it's exactly like you're expecting the best. The best will come. And it can come through storms. 
if you expect the worst all the time, that's exactly what you'll get. Even when the best is right in front of you. So it can be in regards to relationship, money, your health, a number of things. We can ask for things and they will be re presented to us and we will miss out on the gift because of not being patient, which means being aware. That's what it means to me. Because you, when you take the time to slow down, which is what patience will do for you, you can know when the blessings are there and when they're coming. What would you say is the biggest hindrance to manifesting something into existence? Not having patience. <laughs> Not having patience. <laughs> that's, I think that's going to be the theme of today's yeah, conversation. Patience. If patience. you don't have patience in life, yeah. Because it can happen right away. It depends on you, how you feel towards it. And there, you know, there are people who are like, well, I was excited and it didn't happen. Well, you know, number one, I'm not God, but I would say <laughs> there's still things within you and in your situation you need to work on within yourself. Because that same person who's saying that might be at the same time in the, in the back and the, something they have said prior to that of being in this place of, oh, yeah, I'm going to win something or, oh, yeah, I, I know I'm attracting this or that. But there are other things you still have programmed in your mind, you know, that you still need to work on. So it's about being patient. Before you won the lottery, were there any other synchronicities or things that happened in your life? It could, short, it could be shortly before you won, the day you won or Anything else that happened shortly before it happened that made you think in retrospect, hey, something, something's going on here? Or, or did it just happen all at once? <laughs> did you have any signs? I, I mean, you were intentionally manifesting this. When, yeah. But did anything happen? I was happen? intentionally manifesting it. And it had, that, that amount that I had wanted had actually showed up several months prior. And I thought, oh, okay, and then, you know, as anybody would, if they write a number down or they have intentions towards something, you believe that that is going to happen. And it didn't at the time, but I just said, okay, not right now, but it will. So see, that's faith. You don't give up on yourself. And when it did, did I feel a certain way? I, I just felt the same way I did then. Like, okay, this is going to happen, but it did. So uh, the only side was looking at that board and seeing the amount. And I thought, okay, this will be a good time for it to happen. And it did. So, um, yeah, I think for each, each person have their own intuitive sense of things. And for me, I just was in the space of belief that, you know, this is something that I needed to have happen and it happened. And so... Yeah. And and how would you say that intuition played a role? Would you say that intuition played a role? How how do you think that affected? At the time, I'd like to say that intuitive, but I just, when I saw the amount, I just want, I put in into my mind, you know, this, this is the possibility. Maybe it's this one. So in terms of intuition, each person is different. Not everybody's intuition is the same. So I can't, you know, I'm not a scientist when it comes to that, but I do know that um, for certain people, you know, you know, um, you can just get a sense of it. And for the when you when you are working with med meditating, doing affirmations, you're doing this on a regular basis. You're gonna feel something. You're gonna feel a change within you first. It'll change you as a person. It'll, it'll build up that muscle of belief. So that falls in line kind of like with the, your intuition too, because intuitively you will know something must happen because you have to have a faith strong enough, like the Bible says, it, it's faith of the mustard grain seed. I forgot what scripture that is, but it, it can move mountains. If you could say to a mustard grain seed, which is so tiny, you could say that type of, have that type of faith or power within yourself 
to make changes, the changes will happen. But you have to have the belief of it. If you don't believe it, you're just basically speaking things and it's going here and there. And it will take a while for it to manifest until it's clear within you. You have to have it within you. Like there's no left and right. It's like straight ahead. This is what's going to happen. And you have to believe. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Well, Cynthia Stafford, where where can people find you're doing personal coaching? You have an ebook, all kinds of exciting yeah. things out there. I have an help, e-book. Helping people. Where, where can people find find you and find your on my website, CynthiaPStafford.com. And soon it will be the ebook and paperback book will be uh, on Amazon and a few other booksellers. And the information will be on my website shortly. Yeah, I was going to say, there there are other people that, you know, besides myself, sometimes I um, do a clubhouse room with a a friend of mine, and um, it's called Speaking to Existence. And this young man is very keen when it comes to the law of attraction, something like myself. He studied all his life, and uh, he coaches people. And his knowledge is, you know, he has me in awe at times. <laughs> you know, I said, you know, no one's ever at a place where they can't, you know, students are going to always be a master of students to me is one of the same. You can be a master of something, but in order to be a true master, you still have to be in a space of learning, never feeling like you know everything. And so uh, I, I love listening to him in his room speaking to existence and that's on Mondays uh, and he's in the UK. So it's one o'clock PM his time. So whatever time a person is, you know, what, whatever time zone they are in, you know, they'd have to adjust it, but there are times I go on there and his rooms are recorded and they can hear, you know, things that I've said, just like me speaking to you. Uh, it's on there. What, where uh, is this that people can find this? Uh, on Clubhouse in the room is called speaking to existence. And um, the room, it's on Monday mornings. For me, it's in the morning time because uh, I'm in California. So it's 5 a.m. in the morning for me. <laughs> but uh, it's 1 p.m. Uh, British, uh, British, Great Britain time or the U.K. It's there in the U.K. It's where they're out of. But one room I did with him, he was speaking of, a few people that uh, I think is, you know, worth people, they want to do research on others besides like Joseph Murphy of Neville Goddard, Helen Hatsall, Helen Hatsall. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you might have, you had somebody speaking about that, but she was someone who, whatever contest she entered, she won. It's very, and and I'm going to say, I think she she might have not won a few of them, but for, for the most part, whatever she entered, she won. That's, that's true belief. That's having faith. But she also studied the Silva method, which is, you know, I'm not going to get into the Silva method. I've, I've read up on that and stuff too. But, um, and he's mentioned other people who have used the law of attraction unknowingly. And I'm going to say, um, but they created these, you know, um, situations in their life where uh, I think one time we had a, room where we were talking about he was talking about Conor McGregor hmm. and um, using him as an example how he was speaking to existence I'm going to I'm going to be winning this and there are people who do that but he this particular person based on his record and the words that he was speaking to existence you would see it happening so the power of belief is so strong so strong um, but I in regards to me, you know, my definitely CynthiaPStafford.com. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and they can, uh, um, information about my coaching is on there. And I'm going to be adding a VIP uh, co- coaching cert, um, session. And actually, I don't want to, want to call it a session. It's, a, um, it's for those who just want to go to a different level, but it's it'll be available in 
they can email me for more information in regards to that. That's not something that I'm just necessarily, you know, uh, that's for people who are ready to go to a different level in terms of manifesting in their heart. Hmm. Well, that sounds really intriguing. We will definitely put put links to your website below for people okay. to, to find that. I know we could we could talk all day, but have so many questions. You're so, such an inspiring person, but is there anything that you wanted to say today that, that I don't know enough to ask or that, or that you just wanted to say today? Um, that was one of them about <laughs> that's all that people should look her up. Um, oh, which, which one? Helen Hatsa? Helen, H-E-L-E-N. E, I believe, Helene, Helene. Hatsa. H a d s e l l. I think I'm spelling her name correctly. And um, there, there are people who are studying her now. She's passed away, but this woman, um, she was uh, Jose Silva's, I believe, his secretary or his PR person. But she was listening and started putting into practice what he was talking about. And her and her family would, you know, do their meditations and things. And they were creating wins all the time. But she was also in the mindset of believing she was a winner. So that's where, again, belief, you have to believe that you're a winner. You have to believe beyond all physical circumstances around you. You could start from zero, go from zero to millions or billions. It all depends on you and your belief system. Yes. And she's mm -hmm. she's a really um, interesting person, Hel Hel Helene Hadsel. I I interviewed, um, and she's known as as the contest queen for people that aren't familiar. And I interviewed another person yeah. that is also goes by has the reputation of being uh, a contest queen, Carolyn Willman, and she she went down to her residence um helene or helen is it helene or helen but it's hatzel's <laughs> residence and yeah and uh met Let's her see. and she seems like she was a really is she uh, still alive um no no well not helene helen hatzel is not alive but carolyn wilman this other this other contest queen who is helene hatzel was sort of her mentor and so Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah. Helen Hatzel, Hatzel, yeah. H E L E N, and then H A D S C L L. So H Helen Hatzel. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she died in twenty ten. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, but that's that's really incredible when you see people that integrate that and so openly too, like your like yourself. I mean, you're very transparent that you believe in the law of attraction and manifestation and you are very open about speaking about that, how it has affected your life, including your lottery win. It's really, really incredible and it's very inspiring. So I really, really appreciate your, your time and your insights today. Thank you. Thank you. For people that either don't understand or that they're thinking critically like about this. So how do you explain the differences between if something happens and it, just happens to be people that say, oh, that's a coincidence. Nothing is related to what you, so skeptical people. Mm -hmm. What what do you say to someone that thinks that's it's just a coincidence? If you believe you're manifesting something and then it happens. For those who think it's coincidence, that's their mindset. It, it's not a coincidence. <laughs> it's very, you know, I... Uh, I'm 60, so for me, I've lived long enough to to where I can see uh, whether something is a coincidence or, and I and I don't really, I've learned to stop saying, oh, that's just a, that's a coincidence for me. For others, if that's their belief system, that's them. But for me, I recognize that this synchronicity. That's that's what I I've noticed, and our thoughts will create this synergistic situation where things just come together, it will come together. 
but it's what you believe ultimately. That's my thought on it. Hmm. And then on the other end of it, the other spectrum for people that believe that there are some people that believe that there are no accidents. Some people believe that everything is fate and that it's all sort of pre-planned. What, yeah. what are your thoughts on that? What do you tell? For people who believe in fate and that things are pre-planned, I don't believe in that. Hmm. I just don't. Never did. Never will. <laughs> it, well, you know what? The only thing that's pre-planned is, was, uh, is beyond our actual control, beyond the control of humans, uh, such as the you know, things that are happening right now on Earth. These things were foretold thousands of years ago. You know, Prophet Jesus he said that things that we, you'll know you're in the last days of mankind. And that's a whole nother subject. <laughs> but, you know, these were, there were signs given in the Bible about that. And we're seeing it happening on such a global scale to where in past lives, you know, people weren't communicating like we are now. We have the Internet. We have the way to be able to instantly communicate with another country or someone else. Well, we are seeing things that has never happened in world history. So that's, the, you know, that's the answer to your question in regards to that. But, uh, no, I don't believe in fate in terms of it is fated for a person to be poor. It is fated for a person to... Uh, go through a, a number of circumstances that we actually we take the time. If you're noticing a number of things that are happening in your life and are not the most positive, stop. Being that I, I, you know, I'm Christian, I pray and I ask for God's spirit. I ask for his Holy Spirit to help me out, to help change my thoughts, especially if I need to work within myself to, you know, because all of us go through good and bad times. So for me, when I'm not feeling like I should, I have to stop and reflect what's going on with me. And that's what people need to do. They need to do a reflecting in terms of um, how they actually feel and then move from there. But to put things in the terms of is fate, uh, that's a to me a fatalistic way of seeing life. And it's it's giving your power away is how I see it. So I, it's just not my way. Of, 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 I don't think that way. Well, I like the way you think. <laughs> well, thank well, you. <laughs> well, well, Cynthia, thank you very, very much for your Welcome. time. I know we got to get going here, but I really, really appreciate your time and your insights are very much appreciated. Thank you so much for returning to the podcast today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. So that was my interview with Cynthia Stafford. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Let me know in the comments, what did you think of this interview? I love checking out your comments. There are new interviews coming soon on this channel. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when they come out. Now, if you have a story of overcoming the odds that you want considered for this podcast, Lottery Dreams and Fortune, go ahead and email my team. I will put a link to the email address below. As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support.